Hello there. Jack Pilgrim, Zach Gagan, Jacob Polachek. We're here. We don't usually do this. It's a media opportunity today. We talked to three players, Ainsley Almanor, Andrew Carr, and Otega Owe. And we just thought, hey, all three of us are here. Why not give a couple takes or two about Let's what react. Uh, about, you know, rapidly react to what we just witnessed? So uh, we're three weeks, almost four weeks into summer practices. We're getting full court stuff, five on five. So uh, it's a good opportunity for us to kind of get a feel of how things are going, who's looking good, who's struggling a little bit, uh, some of those things. So that's what we're going to do today after talking to all three players. Uh, Zach, you talked to Andrew Carr for like 45 minutes straight. What did you uh, hear, hear from the Wake Forest transfer? Yeah, Andrew Carr was great. Um, he's he explained his answers very well. He's not uh, not shy at all about what he wants to say, what his thoughts are. Uh, he's very complimentary so far of Lexington, uh, you know, the, the city itself, the team, Mark Pope, uh, how the chemistry has been going so far. You know, they're only what uh, two months into actually kind of knowing each other. A brand new team for everyone. Uh, but he was great. He we asked him things like, you know, what. What's your transition been like? How do you see yourself fitting in? Uh, and it was similar to what he said when, or about when he was playing at Wake Forest. His plan is to shoot a lot of threes. He said he shot under 100 threes at Wake Forest. He wants to get well over that number this year. Uh, there's a, definitely a, a very large emphasis on three-pointers, something that we've kind of been told by Mark Pope, but it's when you hear it from a player in practice who's been doing it for the last three or four weeks, uh, it just kind of reaffirms to you that that r really truly is the plan. Uh, defensive transition is going to be a, a big focal point of how this team tries to generate points. That was another thing he mentioned. Um, one of the major things that stood out to me was he hyped up Travis Perry, the freshman from Lyon County. At one point, he said that he made 59 corner threes in a row. Uh, I know the corner three is kind of the cheap man's three, but if you're hitting 59 in a row, I don't care who you are. That's amazing. He said that he's always seeing Travis Perry in the gym getting up five, 600 so shots a day, shooting at an 85% clip, Ooh. which is pretty insane if you ask me as well. Um, I don't care where you're shooting from there. Even if you're shooting from the corner, 85% is amazing. So we've got... Uh, a widespread of of, uh, of shooting is really was his main talking point so far. Uh, a lot of guys that can really get the ball up. Uh, he was very complimentary of Brandon Garrison. He mentioned him a couple times by name um, on the defensive end. Same with Amari Williams. He said that Amari Williams has a great second jump where Andrew will pump fake. Amari will go up and try and block it, and then when Andrew tries to go around and, and maybe do an up and under or something, Amari's other hand, the left hand, will come out of nowhere and pin the ball against the glass. Uh, so. He highlighted a couple of those defensive guys, um, and that's that was the 30 minutes that I had with Andrew Carr. <laughs> I'm sure there more stuff will come to me over the over the time that you're all. Talking I was there about. for eight of those minutes. Talked to uh, Otega and, and Ansley as well. You talked to all three, I believe. A lot about just the transition of of you know offensive terminology and how Mark Pope's system is pretty complicated. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, I think all three players talk a little bit about that. Just what have you, what did, you know, have you heard about their transition and, and how they're kind of uh, learning this system? Yeah, so I talked to Ansley Almanor, who said it's a lot of reads, but they're, they're enjoying it. They're getting used to it. He talked about how he likes playing defense. All these guys like playing defense, um, which is a big part of it. And then I asked all of these guys about how much how helpful it is to have Jackson Robinson there, a guy that's played in Pope's system. And uh, they all said it's super important that he'll pull guys aside after Pope says something to explain what he means. Um, so that's that's really been a big part of learning this offense and just learning the system in general. And no yelling, no cursing. Like Mark Pope, whenever things go wrong, he'll like pull you to the side and just be like, hey. But let's talk about this. Let's let, I'm not trying to embarrass you. Let's just you know learn this. And they, they all three of them kind of said it's different. It's not weird, but it's just an adjustment of like, hey, I've been yelled at my entire coaching life. You know, hearing d different places, I it's teaching. It's hands-on instruction, which is which is a little different. Um, some football talk. They were at Kroger Field yesterday. They played, I believe, six on six is what Ansley said. Um, that was kind of different. What did you hear from Andrew Carr in that regard? I believe he said that he would play tight end if if he were. We've got positions for for all three, but want to. Andrew Carr's take first. Yeah, he definitely said that, um, I think, ooh, he said Colin Chandler had the best arm. Uh, and if you saw that video, he had like a 40-yard dart that he put into the back of the end zone. So maybe QB2 is already locked in uh, behind Bro Brock Vandegrift there. But uh, to, just to kind of go back, uh, some of my memories of, of what we said with Andrew uh, Carr coming back. Touching on Mark Pope, he was uh, big on how Pope is, you know, you see him out and he's always talking to people, very, seems very personal. He said that's exactly what he is. Like, that's exactly what he is at practice when they're out and about. Uh, he's that exact same type of guy. Uh, he talked about how Pope, 
especially early on in the practice was like getting in the post and like trying to big butt Andrew Carr out of the way, like, you know, using his skills that he's learned over the years to try and uh, translate those to his players. Um, so it's just a very involved uh, coaching staff so far. They were all very, you know, I'm sure they're not going to say anything bad, but they had nice things to say about all these assistants as, as well and uh, how the transition has just been made very easy for them. Obviously, they're doing a lot of these team chemistry things, going out to the, the football field, playing like that. I believe Andrew said, um, I think he said maybe it was Lamont or Otega would be, uh, you know, was one of their better like defensive back type guys. Like, and that kind of makes sense when you, you know, realize that those guys are probably going to be UK's two of their best defenders this year. So, um, yeah, a couple more Andrew Carr thoughts there. Yeah, o Otega said he would be a defensive back because he does not like getting hit. I think he said that he played running back as a kid and got hit a couple too, too many times and was like, yeah, I'm never going to do this ever again. That's why he went to basketball. But if he w would transition over to football, he said that it would be as a safety without question. Ainsley also said that he'd be a tight end. So we have a little tight end battle between the two. Uh, Jacob, there was a, a lot of talk about you know off offense is kind of this – team's identity, Mark Pope's system identity, but there's a lot of talk about defense as well. Otega Owe being kind of the, you know, one of the main anchoring perimeter defenders. Uh, obviously, uh, Andrew Carr, you know, having his own role def defensively as well in, on the interior. I think Otega talked about being a little underrated on, on that side, that there is so much talk about the offense and shooting and things like that, that he was like, I think we got some, some special sauce here on the defensive side. What do you hear about uh, what, what kind of their defensive identity is going to be this year? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting mix because obviously Mark Pope is known for his offense and the, the offense that he had at BYU, but he really recruited – a bunch of guys that are known for their defense. And um, like I said earlier, Ansley Almanor, so, uh, some eyebrows were raised when he said, all of us really like playing defense. Um, and these guys are really buying into um, prioritizing the defensive side of the ball and uh, really shutting down opponents. Yeah, uh, Otago was just – I, I don't know how other teams are going to be able to guard us because we work so freaking hard on the defensive end to make the offense better and the offense is so dynamic and shot makers to make the defense work harder. It was like, we're running constantly. I'm always sweating and, and just fatigued. So if life is very difficult for them in the Joe Craft Center, I think it's going to be very difficult for opposing defenders as well when the season starts. Uh, Wrapping up, anything else that we want to get through is a good little op media opportunity. We're going to try to do, I guess, one of these after they said that it wouldn't be this next week, but the week after we'll have two more and then one more after that to get the whole team. So we'll try to do one of these with each of the uh, little media ops. Any Thing else that we missed on? I know you talked to one guy, so. Yeah, just Andrew Carr's uh, great kid so far. That's all. Yeah, he seems great. Uh, anything left over on, on Ansley or Otega before we get out of here? Nothing that I can think of, uh, but I think we touched on all of it, but I'm excited to hear what these other guys have to say. Well, see you next time. <laughs>